on this episode of Travelogue. Join us as we enter Sichuan's Tibetan region and make our way over lofty mountain peaks and highland plateaus. We'll dine out on the plains Tibetan style, admire exquisite artwork at the Chongqing Trungpa Lamasserie in Litang, and become the guest of honor at a no expenses spared camper Tibetan wedding. So we've just left Ya'an and now must drive through Arlong Mountain in order to reach the Gansu Tibetan Autonomous Prefecture where our next destination lies. Luckily for us, we won't have to climb over Arlong's freezing peaks like these tea porters had to do in the old days. And once we reach the other side, the weather will turn from warm and wet to cold with intense sunshine. As for the next leg of our journey, we'll enter Kangding, the capital city of Gansu Prefecture, pass by Xindutiao, also known as the photographer's paradise, and finally arrive in Litang, one of the highest towns in the world. This is the road we're going to take. Let's get going. The journey from Ya'an to Kangding used to take nearly 20 days to complete back on the Otian horse trail. Thankfully, we now have the Arlong Mountain Pass, which allows us to traverse through the mountain as opposed to over it. At more than four kilometers long, the pass connects two different climate zones, so by the time we'd reached Gansu Prefecture on the other side, it was already nighttime and markedly colder than it was in Ya'an. We finally arrived in Kangding and you can see that this is the best season to come here because of all the cars parked but uh, for tonight the most important thing for us to do is to find some accommodation. Let's see if they have any rooms left. Oh, there are several three-star hotels but they're all packed. Uh, let's go and find another one. Oh, Hi, how are you doing? Uh, do you still have a bed available for tonight? Uh, but we don't have the single, maybe one bed in the four beds room? Yeah, 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 that's fine, that's fine as well. Uh, what's the price? It's 30 yuan per person. Okay, no problem. So although the hotels were full, there were plenty of Tibetan-style hostels to take my pick from. The rooms were clean, the staff spoke good English and helped me book taxis, and I particularly enjoyed spending a night in an authentic Tibetan bed. The next morning, we set off to the sound of the rushing river bisecting Kangding. As soon as we left town, the landscape immediately opened up to us. It was an awesome experience driving along our road, with snow and cloud-covered mountains all around us, but we still had to tackle quite a few mountain passes before reaching our first snow-capped peak. Oh, it's bloody freezing! We've left Kangding and we've reached one of the first peaks on Zhedong Mountain. We're 4,300 metres high and uh, I'm not suffering from altitude sickness, but don't get too excited because your heart beats a bit too fast. I'm going to go check out that awesome stupa. Having reached Jodor Mountain, we've now entered the historic region of Kham. It's one of the three ancient provinces of Tibet, with the other two being Amdo and Wei Tang. Once we'd frozen our socks off on Zhedua Mountain, it was a relatively short drive to Xindutiao, our next slightly lower altitude destination. You'll know you've arrived when you see the landscape around you transform into endless rolling pastures dotted with horses and rustic Tibetan dwellings. And in October, when the leaves thaw, the plains are carpeted in a dance of colours.
you don't even have to look for this scenery. It's all around us and everyone stopped here to take photos. There's a very good reason why Xindu Qiao is known as the photographer's paradise. With these kinds of postcard quality landscapes and excellent light conditions, even an amateur can point and shoot for a perfect picture. Honestly though, after taking so many photos of livestock grazing on the pastures, I did start to feel a bit peckish. All right, let's go get a taste of our first Tibetan meal. It's very common in Tibetan culture to have your meal out on the plains. So with the surroundings as inviting as they were, I was quite eager to try this traditional way of dining out. Oh, look at this, what a nice spread. My first meal in a Tibetan, in a Tibetan plateau and we're sitting here under the tent under the lovely sky and this is all typical Tibetan food. Uh, also on the menu were yak buns and dumplings. But my personal favourite was a dry Tibetan cheese that tasted great with sugar. All of this was washed down with either butter tea or chinkur wine made from barley. Tampa is the uh, staple food of Tibetans. And uh, this uh, So she puts a bit of uh, yak butter in the bowl and mixes it with tea. Zamba. So this is uh, it's also, it's also called zamba, but it's barley flour. And she's pouring it into the bowl and. It looked pretty fun to make tampa, so I asked if I could also get in on the action. It feels weird. It's, it's kind of like netting warm mud. Uh, Let's give it a try. Mmm, mm. I can't explain it. It's kind of like cookie though, um, a bit like a, a wheat biscuit, but it's, it's, it's really, really, really nice. It sticks to your teeth as well. With our stomachs full and fingers smelling like tamper, we headed into town where I was pleasantly surprised to find other foreigners. Hey guys, hey, how you doing? Uh, we're from CCTV9, uh, we're an tra English travel programme. Uh, okay. uh, we saw you guys and we had to stop our car to come out and say hello. Oh, um, okay, sure. How are you, uh, how do you, how are you guys finding Xindu Uh Because we have to change buses to go to Dagong. Oh, okay. You're going to Dagong? So yeah. where are you going to afterwards? Uh, Tamba. So, do you know about Shangri-La? Are you guys here to search for Shangri-La as well? Yeah, yes, we can. We, yeah, You've we, been there already? Yeah. How was it? It was, it was good, nice, yeah. it was good. Did you go? Very nice. Quite toasty. Okay, was it in Yunnan, Zhong, uh, was it Zhongdian or was it, uh, was it Yading in Daochang? Yading. 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 Brilliant, brilliant. That should, uh, that's where we're going as well and that should be, I've heard that it's incredible there and it's, it's meant to be quite really unspoiled. Nice. Yeah, but you have to go to Daocheng. Have to go to Daocheng. 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 Which that is very unspoiled. Definitely, definitely. All right, brilliant. We'll, we'll head back on our way then. Okay, sure. All right, have a great day, guys. Have Cheers, day. bye. Although we were spending a lot of time on the road, and sometimes quite perilous ones at that, the scenery was well worth it. From morning to evening, the VR side of the car window was constantly changing, so I was careful not to doze off and miss some spectacular sights. We've left the photographer's paradise of Xindu Chao and we've now arrived at Garasu Mountain. I can see all the way 
to the sacred Yala Snow Mountain over there and we've come to watch the sunset over the horizon. I highly suggest you come at five o'clock because that's when it's at its most beautiful. I would have loved to have stayed for the sunset, but we had to rush off to the next town before it got too late. See you guys in Yajiang. After a very bumpy two-hour ride from Garasu Mountain, we finally arrived in Yajiang, where most people spend the night before they head off to Litang, the highest town on earth. Honestly, my head still hurts, so the prospect of spending a night at 4,000 meters above sea level isn't too fun for me. And uh, Yajiang's 2,600 meter altitude is, <laughs> is probably a lot better. We've come here at night, but people are still having fun and dancing, so I'm going to go and join them. We're going Dance to is a part of daily Tibetan life. Often, you'll find people gathered outside dancing whenever they have a moment to spare. And although I was anything but graceful, I was also swept away by the infectiously cheerful music that night. Right, I'm well rested, my headache's gone and everyone's getting ready to leave for Li Tang. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough time to really check out Yajiang, but I've been told its surroundings offer some great trekking opportunities. <laughs> Arriving here at Kadzala Mountain, I can honestly say I've never been so excited to see Yak before. <laughs> 